Welcome to another episode of NeverEndingPanel.com. Tonight's episode is Jules Verne. Some say he's a highly imaginative writer. Some say he's a highly imaginative writer. Others say he's a visionary. Are the two well, mutually exclusive? Yeah, I, I gotta ask what's the difference. Right. So that's really what we're gonna ask. In other words, can you be one or the other? Are there? Can you can you point about? Can you point to authors who are highly imaginative writers but are not visionaries? Um, can can you have writers who are absolute visionaries, like some would say Philip K. Dick? is an absolute visionary, um, certainly a highly imaginative writer, but sometimes it's hard to get through. So in Jules Verne's case, um, most would agree highly imaginative and visionary, but it seems to me that, uh, they're, they're, that the two can be mutually exclusive. I think a lot of writers are highly imaginative. I mean, anything fantasy, anything, anything unusual can be highly imaginative, but the visionary is the first person who... Um, who wrote about having a cell phone or a personal computer, laptop computer in their books in the 1940s before we even had um, microprocessors. That was visionary. But, you know, someone who imagines, um, describes fairyland, that's, vision, that's imagined. Right, imagined. But, it, but it's not necessarily a visionary. So, for example, the notion of, uh, what's that going to Okay. Uh, the, the notion that... Um, Somebody comes up with it with a, a, a wild and fanciful land. You're saying, okay, that's great, but is that pretending what might be coming in the future? Art. What's your definition of both of them? Ah. You know, I mean, I what see. do you mean by visionary? David Lindsay was a visionary, but his writing was from hunger. But he was still a visionary. <laughs> you need to put this over here because you know. Um, that's a great question. Um, what would be a visionary? Um, well, I mean, Lindsay had like a vision that 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 we could all live uh, on, shall we say, a higher plane of existence. And his novel, A Voyage to Arcturus, you know, a guy goes to another planet, and because he's on this other planet, it was written in the 20s, he gets new organs that give him new perceptions in life, et cetera, et cetera. But the writing's terrible. Gotcha. You know, and so, but and so, but is he imaginative? Well, yeah. Is he? I mean, so I'm having trouble figuring out what the difference is. Because well, a lot of times it's both. Now that the gun is actually out of my hand, I'm starting to think again about that topic. <laughs> uh, and I think by visionary it means the stuff that you actually nail. That's so cool about the future. Jules Verne actually said the United States is going to get into space and it's going to do it from Cape Canaveral. And he simply said this because it's as close to the equator as you can get and still be in the mainland United States. And he was absolutely right. He was right about how important electricity was going to be in the future. He was right about underwater breathing gear. I mean, this guy nailed a lot of things. All right, taking shooting rockets to the moon, uh, cannon to the moon, as it were. You're building part back around. But there are a lot of things that he actually just really nailed. Yeah, cool. So in that respect, I think he would. That's what you. Well, if that's your definition visionary. of a visionary. Then, but it's a subjective definition because it can mean any uh, number of things. Richard, well, the implication of what you just said is that the guy is grounded in science. Well, he was. I mean, if you look at... And not every 20, writer is. He's right. If you look at... A, a, if you look at... A, I mean, I think back to 20,000 Leagues you know, Beneath the Sea. I mean, he, he listed, you know, all the crustaceans, all the types of fish. I mean, it was, it was hardcore science in there. Hair. Uh, yeah, well, a uh, visionary would you consider some of the things like uh, Philip K. Dick, as he imagined what advertising would be like in the future. We're actually seeing a lot of that. We've just had arguments over a great big mural on a building. I that mean, is not visionary. That is horrific. <laughs> that, that is <laughs> predicting the horror. But this is it good visionary. Marty, you could have Philip horrific K. Dick vision. was just an adult drug addict. So. Right, so in other words, highly imaginative writer, but it's hard to get through his writing, so, you know, maybe not not, uh, not, not someone you would necessarily want to read. So he's highly imaginative and a visionary. But not necessarily somebody that you could just get through reading easily. To, yes, to go with where I was going, the, if, if they're grounded in science, is that visionary or extrapolation? Right. Uh, uh, and, and if you've extrapolated correctly, then you're a visionary. Arlene. All right, let's not forget that in 20,000 Leaps, um, there was a submarine way advanced over you know, anything, but it wasn't the, or he wasn't the original inventor of that, obviously, and playing around with Vinci. Right. So did well, he, he doesn't get props for the submarine. He gets props for everything else. Well, a cylinder-type submarine that actually worked uh, along principles that we know with ballast tanks, oxygen reclamation, and stuff like that, he does get a lot of props. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll leave it up to our readers to go ahead. Sorry, we'll leave it up to our viewers to go ahead and comment on the thing right out there. Uh, what do you think, visionary, uh, imaginary writer, one and the same? We'll leave it up to you to decide. Thank you. Very highly recommended to read the stuff. What stuff? 
Where, 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 this is the awkward pause part. No. 